Welcome to video 21 in series 3 and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the nav mesh and make a start on setting up a nav mesh agent as well. Alright, so what do you use a nav mesh for? Well, in Unity, uh, in order to have AI that's able to navigate around the scene properly, you need to use their nav mesh. There are other solutions available, but this is a pretty good one and uh, one good for a pre-prepared uh, scene. Uh, so what does a nav mesh do? Basically, a nav mesh agent that's on a, ba a baked nav mesh uh, will be able to pretty much navigate around the map without hitting into static colliders and getting stuck against them and unable to uh, navigate to where it needs to go. Uh, so to bake a nav mesh, you need to tell it what objects in the scene, what colliders in the scene are static and will never move. Uh, I've already added the navigation window here. You just go to Window, Navigation, and it'll come up, and then you can just dock it wherever uh, if it doesn't appear here. Okay, uh, so once you've got that, in order to be able to bake a nav mesh, so the bake button down there, as I was saying, you need to set the colliders that will never move to static. So anything that's a wall that can't move, anything that's a floor, you need to set it to static in the inspector. Now doing that as well also has a, another a bit of significance as well. It'll become uh, important for the light map baking as well. It'll also uh, be important for a static batching as well, which is to make the game more efficient. So if you have a huge number of objects that are all sharing the same material and they're all not going to move then you should set them all to static so unity knows that and it performs static batching on it but unity is actually really smart anyway so even if you didn't do that it will it will do some sort of batching and save you a lot of uh, performance will save you a performance hit anyway it is very clever like that but there are other things like mesh baking but sorry that's all off topic and just remember that word and go look it up and you'll learn a bit more about how to make your game even more efficient if possible. Uh, okay, then, okay, I'll hit static here. Yes, I'll change the children so the floor will now be static. Uh, now you'll notice something. The light mapping business will be going on here in lighting. I've set it back to auto. And if you find that it's grinding away forever and ever and ever, uh, the moment you set a big area to static, uh, there is a way around that, and a Unity dev explained it quite well in a forum what the things that you can try, and one of them is to set in the pre-computed real-time GI to set the real-time resolution down. So it's by def default, well for me it was 2, I'm just going to set it to like 0.1, and there's no visible difference except uh, that the light mapping just finishes really quickly and my CPU won't be churning over and over and over for that. So that was something that you needed to know because it's probably going to happen to you too. Now this wall here. Okay, so this wall too is never going to move. I'm going to set it to static. I may delete the wall. Uh, in fact, I probably will later. But for now, I'll just set it to static so my nav mesh agents don't get stuck against it. What about this wall here, the rigid body wall? No, this one I will not set to static because these are rigid bodies and I want them to be able to move. My nav mesh agent will have a collider on it and it'll be able to smash through the wall and pursue the player. So that's, uh, well, that's, that's what I'm after anyway. Uh, so going back to the navigation uh, panel, I'll just hit uh, bake. So uh, I don't need to select anything. It's on all. So anything that's static uh, will get baked. OK, so I'll hit that. Now, it bakes with some default settings. In order to change them, you go click on the Bake tab, and then you can select the agent radius, change that, the agent height, and so on. Uh, so I need to have a nav mesh agent in the scene. I'll clear that for now. Uh, so I need to have a nav mesh agent and know what the size of my nav mesh agent is. Uh, what is a nav mesh agent? Sorry, that's the um, uh, the the AI. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just make a cube as my uh, enemy, and I'll just reset the position. Just move it a bit out of the way, move it up as well. I'll make the size in Y2. Okay, so now it's perfectly touching the floor like that. Uh, I will give my AI a rigid body as well. So that way my explosion can affect them. Uh, so I'll add a rigid body and set it to is kinematic. This There's another component that's going to handle the movement of the AI. 
All right, and I'll uh, also add a nav mesh agent. Agent, it's called nav mesh agent. That's the one I want to add, and this is what will move the AI about on the scene and navigate on the nav mesh. So you must have a nav mesh, otherwise you'll get errors or just a warning message. But either way, it's all bad. Okay, so uh, let's go and have a look at this now. The first property here is the radius, and I am having trouble telling what is the radius here. So let me turn off the mesh renderer. There, I can see it now. I can turn off the collider as well, just to make it a bit darker. And I can see that the circular bit, that is the nav mesh agent. That is like the nav mesh agent's collider for navigating around the map uh, before it can get stuck in something or bump into stuff. So I'm going to increase that radius to make it a bit bigger, so like 0.7. All right, so there you go. The radius is a lot bigger. It'll encompass the cube uh, itself. Uh, the height is fine. One, it's the same height as the um, uh, mesh render, well, the, the game object itself, rather. Uh, the speed is 3.5. It's slower than the player, which I'm happy with. Uh, auto braking, yes. Now it needs a stopping distance. Otherwise, it will always try and go inside of whatever the target is. And you don't want it trying to go inside of the player. It just looks terrible. So I'll uh, put a stopping distance, maybe a four, maybe three, something like that. And it'll attempt to stop. It'll start stopping. It'll br put on its brakes as soon as it's less than four units away from the player. Okay. Uh, so that's that. Now the collider. I don't want the collider to actually see this collider is meant so that it can bash through walls and also so the grenade can hit the collider and uh, then the explosion happens and what I will do is to access the rigid body turn off is kinematic and I will also turn off the nav mesh agent and then the uh, enemy will then just fly off uh, affected by physics but I don't want the collider the box collider to be so big as you can see it right now uh, to be basically extending. Oh, let me hide the uh, UI. Sorry, one moment, because it's getting in the way. All right. I don't want the uh, uh, collider to be so tall because it'll drag on the floor and just cause problems uh, potentially. Anyway, potentially. So I might try point nine, and yeah, that's good. It's clear off the ground and it's tall enough so that it'll feel well right enough for striking with the grenades. Okay. Uh, so that will do, and I'll turn on the mesh renderer again. And uh, we pretty much have our nav mesh agent set up. So let me go back to the navigation panel. Now my agent radius, so you would set this to the to the size of your largest agent in the scene. So whatever the largest agent is, uh, set the agent radius to that. So it's 0.7, which is good. The agent height, 2. I believe it's 2. Uh, the best way to know is to experiment, so I'm not 100% sure myself on that. And then a uh, step height is talking about uh, how high a step it can basically jump onto and go to the next step. And the slope here is what sort of it, like a terrain slope or a ramp, what kind of angle can it go up? It will complain if you try and put it too high, it'll tell you there's a, uh, it's basically conflicting and you need to increase the step then. I'll leave it as it is. Uh, no big deal at the moment. Off mesh links. Well, I suggest you go and look at the Unity tutorials about that. That's another story entirely about the nav mesh agent being able to traverse one uh, nav mesh area to another or basically uh, what is not reachable, like on top of the wall. So if I made the wall bigger, then the nav mesh agent could in theory jump from this floor up onto there. But that's a whole nother thing on its own. And I won't get into that. Uh, all right, so and you can see here, there's other stuff you can do too uh, with areas, but that's yeah, go watch the Unity tutorials on that. It's a pretty big topic. All right, so let's bake it. And well, I guess I was really fast and I guess it's done too. So I've got my um, uh, nav mesh set up and I'm ready to go to the next video. Not quite. I know what I'll do, uh, just to give you a bit of coding in this. Uh, the grenade explosion. Uh, now, in order to affect... Uh, so let's go back for a moment. Let me hit play, bring this up. Okay, and... Oops, I blasted the, the uh, uh, AI somewhere. Oops, let me do that again. 
hit play. Okay, so there's the um, AI there. And you can see that really strange behavior there. That's because um, when I did the explosion, the force being applied onto the rigid body now is conflicting with what the nav mesh agent should be doing. And it's caused a bug now. I've caused a bug. It's my own fault. So that's why I was going to show you a bit of scripting now. Uh, where I'll go and make a few changes to the grenade explosion script to take care of that. Okay, so what I will do is to go down here. I can do it. I'll do it above. Rather, I'll do it above. So if, um, and what else can I do? If hit collision dot get component, and this is going to be uh, the nav mesh agent component that I'm getting, which is attached to the AI, the cube here. I need to give that a new name too. And this is the nav mesh agent, which I'm accessing by code now. So I'm first going to check if there is one actually attached to the collider that was struck is not equal to null. All right. If it's not equal to null, then I'm going to disable it. Then I'm going to say hit collider dot get component, a nav mesh agent. Um, well, dot enabled. So this is how you enable and disable a lot of components, not every component. So like the rigid body doesn't have an enabled uh, property. So in it, dot enabled is equal to false. All right. And so if it's got a nav mesh agent, that'll be disabled. And then the rigid body here, if it's not equal to null, it is the is kinematic is set to false and a force is applied. Uh, and moreover, I need to increase the mass of this. Maybe I should increase it to like 20, not 201, 20. That's something I'm not, maybe 30. That's still a pretty light enemy. Okay, so let me save that. And let me give it a name as well. I'll call it Evil Cube. All right. And then I'll hit play. Okay, I can see the evil cube. It's not a cube anymore, but yeah, don't correct me on that. <laughs> and then the, you can fire the grenade, and there you go. Uh, the reason why it behaves properly now uh, is because, well, the evil cube's nav mesh agent is turned off, and it's not fighting with the force applied to the rigid body. Right, but this is a very boring enemy. It doesn't chase the player. So that's next video. I have to show you that next video. I'll show you some new code and we'll have a bit of fun there. All right. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.